Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're going to have a look at missed opportunities from QtLab, a quad probabilistic gate that gives you the possibility to add randomization to patterns in a compact space. First, I'll explain the concept of probabilistic gates. Then, I'll go over the functions and features of the module, and then we'll dive into a series of patches. If you'd like to support this video series, or you want to get access to the PDF sheets I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. If you'd like to see some musical demos first, you can use the timeline to navigate and come back to the technical details later. But now, let's dive right in. A probabilistic gate is a simple function that responds to incoming high voltages, like trigger and gate signals. Every time the module receives a high input signal, it randomly decides whether that signal is passed on to its output or blocked within the module. You have some influence over the decision making by setting the probability for each possible outcome. For example, you can give both outcomes an equal 50-50% chance. In this case, if you feed the module a steady clock, for example, every time the function receives a clock pulse, there is a 50% chance that pulse is passed on to its output and a 50% chance it's blocked. On average, this results into half the amount of signals passing on. However, because the decision is made for each individual high signal, the output will be a random pattern and not a clear mathematical division. In this simple visual example, with just a string of 10 gates, you might as well see a few more or less than half of the signals being passed on. Changing the probability greatly influences the random pattern. For example, if you set the probability a signal is passed on to 90% and thus the chance it's blocked to 10%, you'll get an average of 9 out of 10 signals passing on. In our example with the steady clock, you would get a clock with every beat having a 1 in 10 chance to be dropped out. If you invert that chance to 10% chance the signal is passed on and 90% chance it's blocked, you would turn a steady clock into an occasional random pulse that is still in sync with the incoming clock. In all of the visual examples in this video, I use a steady clock to demonstrate the functionality, but you don't need to feed this function a steady clock at all. You can also feed it a trigger pattern from a sequencer for example, or even just random gates with variable lengths. The module will apply the random chance on each incoming high signal and hold the value as long as the input stays high. Then, if it detects a new high signal, apply the random chance again. So with the basic functionality of a probabilistic gate being clear, let's have a look at the module we're using today. The QtLab missed opportunities is a quad probabilistic gate. The four gates all have their own in and outputs, each with their own LED. Here's the in and output of the first gate, the second, third and fourth. So you can feed each gate a unique pattern and use the randomized outputs individually. However, all four gates follow the same probability setting. That setting can be controlled with a CV input here, called density. With a zero volt external control voltage, the chance a signal is passed on is 0%. When you start feeding it a higher voltage, that chance increases all the way up to a 5 volt input, giving a 100% chance the incoming signal is passed on. The input of the second, third and fourth gate are connected to the result of the previous gate. This normalization is only broken if you patch a signal to the input of a gate, not when you use the output. So you can create four patterns based on a single input if you like. You can set the behavior of this normalization with this switch, selectable between two modes, miss and match. In match mode, signals that are passed on by a gate are normaled to the input of the next gate. So, for example, if you feed the module a steady clock with a 50-50% chance, the result of the first gate could be something like this. Then, that exact output signal is fed into the input of the second gate. That gate creates another 50-50 chance based pattern, which in turn is passed on to the third gate, and so on. In missed mode, signals that are blocked are passed on to the input of the next gate. So again, 
with a steady clock with a 50-50% chance, all the gates are blocked by the first gate will be passed on to the input of the second gate. In turn, signals blocked by the second gate will pass on to the next gate, and so on. The first input, not being normal to another gate, is unique. When nothing is patched into this input, it becomes a random pulse generator. The density CV here controls the amount of random pulses being generated. Finally, there's a reset input right here. This input utilizes the fact that the module uses a random seed generated from ambient noise when you power up the module to generate a pseudo-random sequence to make decisions. At the falling edge of a gate or trigger, the module resets the sequence to the random seed it started with, creating the same pattern. This allows for some creative patches, but be aware the seed is changed every time you power on the module, creating a different sequence. When you feed the reset input a higher voltage, for example a longer gate, the module will hold the state of each gate as long as the input is high, before resetting the sequence at the end of the gate. Because in a modular system you can use triggers and gates on pretty much anything you like, there are a lot of creative possibilities. But let's start with some basic patches. To make a simple start, you can take a steady clock, feed it into a clock divider and send the different divisions to each of the probabilistic gates. For example, a 16 step division to some heads, a quarter division to a clock and two other divisions to percussive sounds. Now, if you feed the density CV a manual offset voltage, you create hands-on control over the pattern. But you can use trigger sequences as well. For example, you can use multiple sequences from a BeatStep Pro to create more interesting patterns. Again, you can use an offset voltage for manual control over the density. To create more controlled temporary random variations, you can modulate the density CV over time. For example, you can use another trigger, perhaps one that occurs only every two bars, and have it trigger an envelope. If you invert that envelope and mix it with a 5V offset, you can create a pattern that is passed on normally, but every time the modulation envelope is fired, will temporarily lower the chance parts of the patterns are passed on. In this case, creating a variation every other bar. You can create step-based probability in combination with a CV sequencer. For example, use a clock to progress a simple 8-step trigger sequencer and program a pattern triggering the kick on the 1st, 5th and 8th trigger. Then also send the clock output to trigger a head on every step. Now when you use the same clock on an 8-step CV sequencer and send that sequence to the density input, you can dial in the probability for each step. For example, set the probability on the first and fifth step to be 100% so the core beat stays up, but set other probabilities for the other steps. You can send the heads through a VCA and modulate that with the CV sequence as well to add some volume modulation over time. All these tricks can be used on other things than percussive sounds. For example, to spice up a simple melodic voice made with an oscillator, filter and VCA. When you use an 8-step sequencer to create a looping melody, you can send the gate output to a probabilistic gate. Then use the randomized triggers on an envelope and have that open the filter and VCA. Using an offset voltage, you can have the melody come into a track starting from nothing, all the way up to the full 8-step sequence. You 
can use some modulation to automate the randomization amount. A slow smooth random voltage can really work well here. Again, use an offset voltage to dial in the base density and mix in the random voltage to determine the spread. The internal normalization between the gates makes it easy to create multiple related signals based on a single input. Let's start with the internal normalization in match mode on a kick drum. Create a trigger pattern, feed the signal directly to a kick and a copy to the first gate. Send the result of the first gate to a sample that fits nicely on top of the kick. Because of the internal connections, that output is passed on to the second gate as well and you can use that on something else. For example, to trigger another percussive sound that fits nicely on top of that. By tweaking the density CV with an offset, you can create subtle variations to a steady sound. The mist setting can create other interesting setups. For example, if you feed a steady clock through a gate to a closed hi-hat. Now, every clock pulse being blocked by the first gate is sent to the second. So you can use that to trigger an open hi-hat for example. Similar tricks can be used in ambient, generative or drone setups. Especially the mist setting works nice for this. If you feed a steady clock to the first gate and send the four outputs to various elements in your patch, you can create interesting rhythmic modulation. For example, trigger a slow attack decay envelope influencing the wave shape of an oscillator. You can trigger two different envelopes, mix them together and have them influence a filter. Or use an envelope to modulate the speed of an LFO modulating a panning module. Because the module tracks gate length, it can be used to hold values for a longer time. If you feed the module a square wave LFO and use a slow random voltage to modulate the frequency of that LFO, you get interesting fluctuating patterns. You can now use the gate outputs on other elements in your patch. For example, send the gate to an ADSR or slew limiter to change the frequency of an LFO gradually over time. When you send a gate, slewed gate or ADSR to a VCA, you can control anything you like. For example, the volume of a sound or the amount of modulation going from one module to another. You can also use triggers or gates to reset, start or stop a sequencer and so on. The built-in random pulse generator and reset input add additional functionality to the module. Here are some examples. Random triggers can be used on all sorts of things within a modular system. Only the first channel generates random pulses, but because of the normalization you still get four different patterns. You can use them as a random clock, to start and stop sequences, or to trigger envelopes and create subtle modulation in an ambient patch for example. Sending a slow random voltage to the density input and manually switching between miss and match setting can create interesting variations. The reset input is fun to experiment with if you like to create semi-random patterns. If you use a steady clock as the input for a gate and the division of that clock to reset the module, you will get a unique looping pattern. 
If you create a pattern to trigger some heads and use something like a 7th division to the reset in an 8 step beat, you get a looping but slowly shifting pattern over time. And of course, remember you can combine the gates in any way you like. For example, you can use the first gate to create a stream of random pulses, triggering an envelope. Use a steady clock on the second gate to trigger a closed head, and a normal third gate to trigger an open head in miss mode. And use the fourth gate to add randomization to a steady gate pattern opening a VCA. Within a modular system, the uses for triggers and gates are pretty much endless. Feel free to let me know your favorite tricks in the comments. And if you'd like to learn more about low pass gates or clock dividers, have a look at any of these videos. Also smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you'd like to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.